next from the European Mortgage Federation and European Covered Bond Council General Secretary General Mr. Luca Bertard. The new sustainable ecosystem for housing finance. So, uh, Mr. Luca, please. Um, good afternoon to you, uh, Konnichiwa. Uh, it's a great pleasure and a big honor for us to be able to be uh, today with you. And um, uh, I think it, this week has been a special week for the entire world, and it is very important that we build the global bridges to support the development of sustainable finance around the globe. This week, we have seen the conclusion of the works of the COP28, which was an historical meeting with more than 100,000 people present in Dubai and, um, and, and, and in Abu Dhabi, where they have been discussing the future of the finance and how finance can be supporting the transition of the global economy towards a greener future. Um, it is very clear from the very beginning of the discussion of this COP that uh, it was a really economical discussion how developed economies can change towards a green economy, but also how those economies can support emerging markets in transition. The big problem, the big political problem uh, is also how to support continent, like for example, Africa, where only 3% of the global CO2 is emission uh, to make a switch to a green economy, where demographically most of the global population will be living in the coming years. We at the European Mortgage Federation, since more than uh, 12 years, have developed an initiative to create a clear energy efficiency mortgage label to help investors to have a clear set of data available on the retail activities of the European banks. Nowadays, we have more than 40 European banks, the largest banks in Europe, that accepted this challenge to make their portfolio greener. I would like to express my personal gratitude for to Mr. Kobayashi because the entire initiative has been created in Europe following the Japanese example and the excellent work done by the Japanese housing um, um, finance agency and personally the work of Mr. Kobayashi who has been inspiring the entire work that we have done, we have been doing in Europe. The label tries to... Um, Sorry, I mean, these lights are not moving. The, the European market is uh, one of the largest markets we have in the world, where we have uh, more than 47 million of people living in Europe and uh, more than 220 million of dwellings are not responding with the criteria set down in the COP21 of Paris. So probably all these dwellings have to be retrofit or have to be uh, refurbish in order to be aligned with the requirements of the Paris Agreement. Unfortunately, the building stock in Europe is very old, and also this is a very different country by country. Of course, the European Union is composed by 27 countries, and they have different characteristics and different importance of the mortgage market. We believe that uh, addressing this issue um, as a European um, uh, framework, with a European framework, can help Europe to move to get all together toward the same direction. So in order to do so, we needed a clear label that is telling information to banks, to consumers, to investors, what is green and what is not green. Of course, in this, we have to factor in this equation and a very important component, which is the social aspect. We have to support the transition of the most fragile part of our citizens. Um, the idea is, is uh, from the strong political leadership of the European Commission President, Ursula von der Leyen, to build the next generation opportunity. So changing not only the finance, but the entire European paradigm in terms of economics of what has to be the future for uh, our upcoming generation. And as I said uh, at the beginning of this week in Tokyo, um, I think the word economics comes from the Greek word oikos, nomos, which are the rules managing the house. So the building stock of the European Union, it's a really at the center of an economical revolution, which will change two major drivers, the investor behavior 
but especially the consumer behavior. So the, the label that we have created wants to address this weakness of the European financial sectors where we have different systems and different building stocks and create an overarching solution from the market which will guide the production of green mortgages which will be the basis to create also green bonds, green cover bonds, green securization in the future. In our organization, we have created also a cover bond label uh, um, that is green. And we have already seen in the last years more, more than 135 billion of issuance in the sectors. So we will be able, we were able to make a real difference and to guide the entire market towards a greener future. Allow me to say a few words about the revolution that we had in the last five years in the European Union. We are approaching the end of the mandate of this European Commission. Uh, in June, we will have a European election, which will set the scene for a new European Commission. But let, let's look back of what happened in the last five years of this European Commission under the guidance of Ursula von der Leyen. Well, the European Union has decided to make a strong political turnover towards a green economy. It was a very brave decision, which a lot of consequence. Someone is blaming the European Commission to have reduced the competitiveness of the European economy. But the challenge that we had, it was to change radically the paradigm of the European economy. How you can change the paradigm so radically? Well, the European Commission has been producing completely new pieces of legislation which have been changing radically the behavior of financial operators and so have a cascade effect on the entire economy. Mainly the most important achievement, of course, is the taxonomy, but also all the set of disclosure requirements that have been introduced in the financial sectors. This week, we have uh, uh, achieved in the European Parliament two important political agreements, which probably will change even further the European uh, financial landscape. This week we have seen, actually on Thursday, the agreement on the Energy Performance Building Directive, where all the European stakeholders will be obliged to move up the energy performance of the mortgage portfolio in the coming months, in the coming years. So every single bank has to look at their portfolio, should try to identify the brown part of the portfolio and take action in order to improve the energy efficiency of this portfolio. This is a, a very important social aspect. Just to give you some numbers, for example, reducing energy costs for European citizens is extremely important to defend the disposable income of families. Um, just to give you a concrete example, in the country where I'm based in Belgium, an average family was spending only around 2,000 euros per year on energy costs. Now with the inflation, this number is more closer, around 3,300 euros. So it's a massive increase and in impact on the disposable income of the families on top of uh, um, not improving the quality of the buildings, which means the quality of the life. So looking always with the eyes of the European Commission, which is aimed to build an opportunity for the next generation, the house where we grow our kids and the disposable income, which probably will finance the education of our kids, has to be protected and the housing building stock has to be improved. Improving the house, it means also reducing healthcare costs, improving the air quality of families, but this should be impacting not only the house where people they live, but also the offices and all the commercial real estate building stock have to be improved radically in the coming years. So this week we have seen two important political agreements on the Energy Performance Building Directive and the new banking package, uh, the capital requirements directive and regulation, which will be implementing the Basel III agreement in the European landscape. The Basel III agreement will be operational in Europe from the 1st of January of 2025, uh, a bit different. I think in, in Japan will be implemented in the, on the 1st of April 2024. But in this implementation of the Basel III agreement, we have inserted a very important uh, disclosures, which uh, 
will uh, will make uh, compulsory for banks to upload the loan to value in case of energy retrofitting or changing in the structure of the house. This will help Europe to take very concrete action by improving radically and offer a discount to families who will be actually making the retrofitting. So they will have a cheaper mortgage and they will have a better uh, amount of money available uh, for uh, uh, for their daily life. Um, in, in this respect, uh, um, we have seen um, also the importance uh, leading role of the mortgage sector in the general economy. Because uh, what we recognize is not only that families, they need finance to retrofit their house, but they need a completely new value chain in terms of small, medium enterprises ready to make the retrofitting. So the real technical bottleneck that we have identified in Europe is that we don't have a value chain ready to retrofit 220 million of dwellings. At the same time, we need solar panel, we need plumbers, we need the training of the staff. So this is a, a new economical revolution that we are putting in place. So we think that the banking sectors not only have to finance mortgages, but they have to finance also uh, small, medium enterprises. And especially, they have to implement the taxonomy rules, not only in the mortgage portfolio, but also in the SME portfolio. What is the real purpose of all this mechanism is changing the mentality of the, of the consumer. We have to make convenient for people to take action and retrofit the house. Because a very important aspect of this story is the de decisional component. Who can take decisions to change the house? Well, only the owners of the house can take decision in making the retrofitting. So we have to really to build a business case which will make really convenient and psychologically convince probably 440 million of consumers to make an energy efficient decision in their house, which is not only retrofitting the house, but it means building a green fridge an energy efficiency fridge, changing the structure of the windows, changing radically the way of, our, uh, of behaving as citizens. So we call this ecosystem and we need to build an harmonized ecosystem where private market incentive, like for example, a cheaper mortgage will go hands in hands in the public subsidies coming from government. Well, in Europe, we are a bit special and we have different countries, different regions, different municipality. So the, what we are trying to do with our energy efficiency mortgage label is to develop a new website where consumer can enter in the website and they can actually make a simulation on their house. Say they can make in 20 minutes and a business case on their house, understand how much they have to spend for making the energy retrofitting and how much this energy retrofitting can gain in terms of uh, savings. So giving their a financial impact immediately on the energy retrofitting. On top of this, the system, this simulator, is giving a very important number, which is the potential increase of value of the property with the energy retrofitting. Well, we want to create a clear opportunity cost for consumer. If you don't take action, you will really lose money. This is the first phase where the, the consumer will be aware of the economical cost and economical opportunity of making an energy retrofitting. After this, we will give also information on where the, law, the house is based of all the public subsidies available for that retrofitting. So for example, in average, a retrofitting can be around 40, 50,000 of euros, probably in some countries, a citizens can get 50% of a fiscal discount for making the, the retrofitting. So this um, simulation will give a clear indication of what the consumer should be doing and what should be uh, fine. Then, after this first phase, the consumer will be guided on a list of banks providing energy efficiency mortgage labels. So they will give uh, the, they will give the opportunity to consumer to look exactly what is the best financial offer to make the retrofitting. We have two products mainly 
mortgages and also consumer loans. Uh, um, that because consumer loans are quite used, especially if you are not buying a new house, probably you want to look for a small amount to make a tiny little retrofitting, like changing the window or changing the heating. In that case, consumer they have a preference for a consumer loans. They don't want to go for um, for a mortgage. Um, after this selection, so the consumer they know what they have to do. They know where we can they can find the money. The, the money. The next step is to create a retrofitting set of options in the sense which are the company that can make actually the works in your region. So they like e-booking, they will find a company that is able to do the retrofitting they want in their region and to find the best price. Well, to, for the small medium enterprises to be available in this website, we are asking three basic uh, conditions. First of all, the retrofitting company, they have to provide data about the retrofitting for free to the consumer and to the bank. So we are feeding, as we have seen in the first presentation, uh, data, green data for the entire value chain. This is very important because the investors buying the bond will have access to this data directly. And uh, this will be a very efficient way to make sure that the data are reliable, shared, and it is possible to share this data because the consumer is given the consent from the very basis. The second condition that we are asking to the small medium enterprises working in this sector is that they have to provide a performance guarantee that the savings will really take place. And the third condition that we are asking is that they have to have an ESG rating while they are doing the works. So we are cleaning three major portfolio of our banks, the mortgage portfolio, the consumer loan portfolio and the SME portfolio. We believe that this will be a real revolution and that we will build a new house for our upcoming generations. But we want to do this at global level and we are asking all our banks and our investors to be, be ready to invest in global developing countries. So we are working with our friends in Indonesia, in Brazil, in Canada, in Africa to make sure that this approach, this ecosystem will not be only European, but will become a global opportunity to create a larger and stronger investor base. I think that the implementation of Basel III will uh, disclose an, a huge amount of cash flows around the globe on housing, because with the, the implementation of Basel III, all the treasury of the banks will be asked to invest in cover bonds and to invest in securization we have a fantastic opportunity to build a green investor basis at the global level and make sure that the Japanese banks can invest in Europe and that the European banks can invest in Japan. This is a build uh, designed to build peace and prosperity. And uh, I think that uh, this is a, a target that is uh, intrinsic in the value of the European Union, where the respect of every single countries and every single market characteristic is designed to build an overarching financial institution. Yes. So uh, we would like uh, just to say, and we really value the collaboration that we have, especially with Japan. We had the honor to be in Tokyo at the beginning of this week. And all the stakeholders and our banks are uh, are very active. We have a lot of Japanese members in our membership. And this is also the merit of Mr. Kobayashi, who has personally been building this bridge over the years. And over um, by sharing information uh, uh, with us on the dynamic of the uh, Japanese market, um, especially on energy efficiency, but also anti-seismic which is very important for countries like Croatia, Greece and Italy, where the anti-seismic measures that you have put in place in Brazil, in, uh, in, uh, in Japan are very important. They can be exported all over the world. Uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. And uh, I give you back the floor to, to you. I'm at your disposal for any question. Thank you very much. Luca Bertolazzo, thank you very much.